Welcome to part two of this series. We left part one at the point where Einstein was preparing to challenge the principle of relativity. He will ask the same question of the principle as that expressed by Richard Feynman. He will ask whether it is true that in all experiments performed inside a moving system, the laws of physics will appear the same as they would if the system were standing still. To consider this question, Einstein will conduct a series of thought experiments using the following two coordinate systems. The coordinate system designated K, which represents a railway embankment. This is the system standing still, in Feynman's words. The other coordinate system is designated K1. This is Feynman's moving system, and it refers to a train moving along the embankment with a constant velocity V. Using these coordinate systems, Einstein mounts the challenge to the principle of relativity by bringing out an inconsistency that comes to light when we look at two items from our list of classical theories and hypotheses first presented in video one. The two items are the law of propagation of light and the classical theorem of the addition of velocities. We will first look at the theorem of the addition of velocities. This theorem is brought up in section six of Einstein's book when he returns to his example of the train and the embankment. Let us suppose our old friend, the railway carriage, to be traveling along the rails with a constant velocity V, and that a man traverses the length of the carriage in the direction of travel with a velocity W. How quickly, or in other words, with what velocity, capital W, does the man advance relative to the embankment during the process? According to the theorem of the addition of velocities employed in classical mechanics, the answer to Einstein's question is quite simple. We add the velocity of the train V to the velocity of the man W. So capital W, the velocity of the man relative to the embankment, equals V plus W. Einstein asks us to confirm this result by looking at it from another perspective, that of the distance covered by the man relative to the embankment. First, he asks us to consider the case where the man stands still on the train. If the man were to stand still, he would advance relative to the embankment through a distance. And this distance would be equal to the velocity of the train V multiplied by the amount of time T that the train has traveled at that velocity. This gives us the distance equal to VT he now takes us a step further to the case where the man is walking along inside the train. In this case, he says, as a consequence of his walking, however, he traverses an additional distance relative to the carriage. This additional distance is equal to the velocity of the man walking along inside the train which is W, multiplied by the time he has been walking, which is T. So this additional distance is equal to WT. To find the total distance traveled by the man relative to the embankment, we add the distance traveled by the train to the distance traveled by the man. This gives us VT plus WT. We simplify this to the sum of V plus W 
multiplied by t. So Einstein questioned, with what velocity does the man advance relative to the embankment? The answer is provided by dividing the total distance travelled by the man by the time travelled by the man. This is given by the sum of v plus w multiplied by t and the result divided by t, which equals v plus w. In other words, the velocity of the train plus the velocity of the man which is exactly in accordance with the result given earlier by the theorem of the addition of velocities. So nothing appears to be amiss, but this is not the case. Einstein states that. We shall see later that this result, which expresses the theorem of the addition of velocities employed in classical mechanics, cannot be maintained. So why can it not be maintained? The problem emerges when we introduce the law of propagation of light. To surface the problem, Einstein first establishes some ground rules. First, the velocity of light is constant in a vacuum. Second, this propagation takes place in straight lines with the velocity c equal to around 300,000 kilometers per second. And to cover the issue of a vacuum, he stipulates. Let us again choose our embankment. We shall imagine the air above it to have been removed. So let's return to the embankment. This is how we left it. But for this next thought experiment, we will make one change. This time the man will sit still in the train. And instead of moving himself, he will turn on a source of light, say a torch or a flashlight. In this case, a ray of light travels in the train instead of the man. And so, it is obvious that we can here apply the consideration of the previous section since the ray of light plays the part of the man walking along relatively to the carriage. So instead of this, where the man walks with velocity w, we now have this, where the velocity of light c has replaced the velocity of the man w in all calculations. And what is the issue? If we look at Einstein's original question, how quickly, or in other words, with what velocity does the man advance relative to the embankment during the process? When using the example of the ray of light, the question effectively becomes this. With what velocity does the ray of light advance relative to the embankment? But the answer we have arrived at is V plus C. But this answer threatens both the principle of relativity and the law of propagation of light. If we look at the law of propagation of light, this states that light can only travel at a constant speed in a vacuum and that is equal to C. But our result shows light traveling at a velocity greater than c relative to the embankment. So this violates the law of propagation of light. And it must be emphasized that light, or indeed anything else, has never been observed to travel at a speed greater than c, its constant speed in a vacuum. And furthermore, if we now consider the principle of relativity. We find that on the moving system, the train, the man will observe the ray of light traveling at a constant velocity c. But for an observer standing still on the embankment, he would see the ray of light traveling at a constant velocity 
of V plus C. This directly contravenes Feynman's definition of the principle of relativity. Einstein confirms this conclusion. At this point, we can summarize where we are with regard to our five classical theories and hypotheses. Einstein has already said that the theorem of the addition of velocities employed in classical mechanics cannot be maintained. And now, in view of this dilemma, there appears to be nothing else for it than to abandon either the principle of relativity or the simple law of the propagation of light in vacuo. So it appears that at least three of our list of five theories and hypotheses are under a severe challenge as to their truth. But before reaching a resolution to this dilemma, Einstein needs one further thought experiment. This will look at simultaneous events. We will discuss this subject in our next video.